Every kid has a great story to tell. Have one? Well, we're listening. Send your best story to the New Indian Express's Bookworm Junior Summer Stories Contest and you could just end up becoming an author over the summer. What are you waiting for? Get writing. Hindustan Institute of Technology and Science. Take your first step toward a future in excellence. Everybody tells you that your what matters. You heard it on the radio, you heard it on the television, you've seen it in the papers. This is something that you've been told all your lives. And it does. There's nothing more important in a democracy than the power of a single vote. But what if you're in the age when you can't legally vote? Well, here's the truth. Your voice matters. And that's exactly what we believe here at the New Indian Express. And that is why we've brought to you Let's debate India's largest and most civil inter-school virtual debate competition. We talk about issues that matter, that matter to students, that matter to us as adults, that matter to us as human beings. Essentially, we talk about things that need to be spoken about and we let young India do all the talking. That's right. We've been through a lot, both as a country, as a human race and as global citizens. We've been through so much in this pandemic and God knows how far the road ahead is. But here's one thing we do know. As long as we have youngsters like the ones you're about to see talking about how they can change the world, I think the world will always have a bright future. So let me welcome you once again to Let's Debate. The motion before the house today is one that hits home. Well, it hits across the boundary line for most of us. Why? Because everybody in India, well, almost everybody is a rabbit cricket fan. I know I am. I know you probably are too. And year after year, the IPL has given us a lot. It gives us something to go home at 8 p.m. to, well, 7.30 this year. It gives us a source of entertainment. It gives us something to talk about. It gives us city bragging rights. It gives us a lot. And the less said about entertainment, the better. I mean, movies are everything for us. And now OTT is, well, it's what we do on the weekend. It's what we do at night. It's what we do when we have time to spare. Because let's face it, the world is a depressing place, right? But... When the country is being ravaged by a virus, when money is in short order, when the gravity of the situation is so deep that lives are being lost by the minute, do we still need expensive sporting and entertainment events happening around us? Well, that's the motion before this house and we can't wait to hear what Young India truly believes on either side of the motion. We at the New Indian Express, of course, have taken a stand. We think it's principle. We believe that the space that we would have normally dedicated for the IPL is now being dedicated to talk about COVID issues and show you photographs, images, stats and issues that truly matter. And we believe that we're making a difference. And we hope you see it that way as well. But that aside, we're still going to let Young India talk about what they truly believe in. And we think we'd be interested in those answers just as much as you are. Are you ready? We've had nine absolutely scintillating rounds of preliminary debates and some of the opinions that these guys brought to us and believe me, they're just 8th, 9th and 10th graders I don't think I had that level of depth, that level of research or that kind of spunk and confidence that they have and they've truly, truly, truly blown my mind and if you watch those debates I know they've blown your minds as well and so let me present to you the winners and the one wild card who made it through Our first speaker of course is Pratyusha Udupa from Purna Praja Education Centre in Bangalore 
Our second speaker, Neha Singhari Konda from Cherek International School up in Hyderabad. Ram Daftari is our third speaker from Birla Global School. Ram, of course, was fantastic in his debate. He was one of the best spoken ones in that. We enjoyed listening to him. Gundeti Aishita, winner of her debate and truly somebody who sat apart in that one. Suchitra Academy in Hyderabad is where she's from. Ryan Majumdar from the JSS Public School in Bangalore is another one who was top of his line. He managed to get through on the heat of that argument and he's here in the finale and we're so happy to have him. Aryan Hotha from the DAV Vedanta International School in Lanjigar is also with us. Orissa, of course, is one of the states that's really battling the COVID pandemic and they've done it exceedingly well. You're here to tell us what he thinks about this topic today. Aryan Hotha. We also have with us Jamin Devakar. Jamin Devakar was somebody whose thoughts were way, way ahead of her time. And I remember both the judges and we were so impressed. Uh, she's from GEMS Modern Academy in Kerala. We also have with us Sai Sri Varshini Madala from Meridian School in Hyderabad again. Varshini, of course, did phenomenally well in her debate. The kind of views she brought in were path-breaking and they really turned the judges in a whole other stream and she was a clear-cut winner there. And finally, we have Arush Sharma from Sai International School, also from the state of Orissa. Welcome, Arush. We did say we had a wild card and that's Dia D. Dia, of course, is from Oak Ridge International School in Hyderabad. Dia is somebody whose opinions were great, but what we really loved about her was a personal experience that she brought in and she really made it count. And that's the reason why she's here in a finale. So all of you guys, gear up. I hope you have a great debate. I know you've got a great future ahead, but let's do this one last time. This is the finale of Let's Debate. Without further ado, let's do just that. We're very excited. We've had nine great rounds and we're here finally and we're here to face off and to talk about something that's very important to the country right now. I'd like to welcome all of our participants. Thank you for being here, you guys. I'd also like to welcome our two judges for this evening. We have with us Mr. Anand Neelakandan. Mr. Anand Neelakandan, of course, is a celebrated author. He's an expert on mythology. He's the author of the Asura series. He's the author of the Bahubali prequels and the sequels and all of those great books that have come out in the aftermath of the movie series. And he's somebody who is an active commentator. He writes a column for the New Indian Express. And we're very excited to have him with us. Thank you, Mr. Neela Kandan, for being here. I'd also like to welcome on board our editorial director, Mr. Prabhu Chavla. Mr. Prabhu Chavla, of course, is uh, somebody who's been in the journalism profession for more years than he'd care to count and I'd care to count. He's been with India Today. He's been with the New Indian Express most recently. He now hosts his award-winning show back on Aaj Tak. And we're very, very excited to have him judge this debate for us. Thank you for being here, sir. Thank you. All right, guys. Now, you know what the motion before the house is. The motion, of course, is expensive sporting and entertainment events should be put on hold while this pandemic is going on. That's right. That's the motion before the house. We have five students who will be talking for the motion and five against. You've got three minutes on the clock to make your opening statements. And without further ado, let me now call upon our first debater. Pratyusha Udupa from the Purna Praja Education Center in Bangalore, who will be speaking for the motion. Pratyusha, if you're ready. Yes, sir. A very good afternoon to respected judges, moderators, and my worthy opponents. I'm Pratyusha Udupa from Purna Pragna Education Center, Sadashunaga, Bangalore. Imagine the situation. You are in a funeral. Everyone are sad, crying, and mourning. You know that the situation is too serious and you want to do something to lighten the mood and cheer up everybody. So, you crack a joke. Now, do you call that entertainment or hypocrisy? Yes, that is exactly like allowing expensive sporting and entertainment during the pandemic. Whole world, especially India, is going through the worst phase of the COVID pandemic. Many of us have seen the sufferings of our friends, families and relatives. The rush at the crematoriums is heartbreaking. The demand and supply of oxygen are not matching. Amidst all this chaos and havoc, can't we postpone expensive sporting and entertainment? Being the daughter of a doctor, I've seen the sufferings my mom is going through. Not even a single day, we can feel lazy to sanitize as she comes back from hospitals. When all the frontline workers, as we call them, the COVID warriors, are striving so hard to make things right, how ethical is it for us to sit at home and have entertainment? The Indian Pandemic League, oh, sorry, sorry, the Indian Premier League, a great entertainment platform. I'm a fan of IPL. Oh, sorry, I was a fan of IPL. 
India, being a democratic country, believes that every individual is equal in front of law and order. When gyms, swimming pools, and other non-essential fields have been put on hold, then why not expensive sporting and entertainment? Let me take the example of IPL at this moment. Eight teams, minimum 18 players, hundreds of supporting staff. Imagine the manpower we could have invested in battling this pandemic. Imagine how many lives we could have saved if we had converted stadiums into hospitals. This is the time where we all stand unitedly and beat the pandemic and not bat the ball. If this is the story of sports, the greediness of the film industry is another tragedy. When all celebrities who should have been role modeled to common people by following pandemic norms are busy in promoting their high budget movies. Forcing the government to open cinema halls at full capacity, we have landed in the second wave of the COVID pandemic. Loka samastha sukhino bhavantu. Live and let live. This is our culture. Let us beat the pandemic united and let us all stand united and beat this pandemic and let this be the only game that we play until we win. I'm thankful for the edX Live team for giving me this opportunity to put forth my thoughts and ideas on this platform. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you, Pratyusha. Let this be the only game played during the pandemic. Very powerful words. Could I now ask to speak against the motion? Neha Singarikonda. Neha, of course, is from Chirek International School. Neha, if you're good to go, your time starts now. Good morning, everybody. First and foremost, I would like to clarify the stance of side opposition. We do not support widespread crowds and um, social distancing not being followed. What we do support is that events such as the IPL, which is held in a safe, bio bubble and it streams on platforms where people can watch without being in contact with other people in the safety of their homes. First of all, these kind of sporting events and entertainment events provide a very welcome distraction to all of those that are bogged down by stress and tension. And it provides a few minutes or perhaps hours of welcome distraction and relaxation and who are we to deny them this beautiful few this beautiful few instances of happiness and um people are enjoying it and this can be seen through statistics there are billions of viewing minutes of the ipl matches through streaming platforms and apart from this people who are actually um fighting off covid they when happy, people have better recovery. And when if IPL provides them happiness, then perhaps they can recover faster and help and live a little better. Also, when sporting events or entertainment events are, are held in a very safe manner and um, social distancing is followed, there won't be a huge change in cases. For example, the IPL is held in a very safe and secure bio bubble and um, they are not coming in contact with each other and with other people outside. Also, in fact, um, these kind of events can actually decrease cases when commentators announce that COVID-19 precautions should be followed and then social distancing should follow. Idols, people who believe, um, idols who are looked up to by many people, when they tweet that people should wear masks and should follow social distancing and should be six meters away from someone, six feet away, then um, people will listen people will actually um, believe in them because these are people that they have looked up to for so long. Also, um, I'd like to say that a lot of jobs are created and it is precisely the reason that everything else has been stopped, that IPL should continue because um, our economy is already in a very distressed state and through expensive sporting events and entertainment events, many, many jobs are created. Social media teams, cameramen, commentators, security, housekeeping staff. It brings in millions of dollars and it's a huge source of revenue. And with that, I would like to say that 
the IPL is worth more than the money it's that's being put into it. It gains a lot more revenue than what. Thank you so much. You brought up the point of how the IPL adds to the economy. Well, to tell us why that may not entirely be true, Ram Daftari, may I now invite you to speak for the motion. Ram, of course, is from Birla High School. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. The fact that the opposition is so intent on excusing today is that COVID-19 is real. Ladies and gentlemen, the opposition will argue that we do not care about the lives of sports persons as, and entertainers as we are ready to see them unemployed. However, the exact reason why we are arguing about these to be put on hold is because we are concerned about their lives. Today, sports and entertainment are whole ecosystems, including organizers, sponsors, franchises, sites, equipments, all working together in such large numbers. It is extremely easy for the wires to spread. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you what is happening. Expensive events like the IPL are acting as distractors from the actual fact about the mismanagement of this crisis. Many questions could be asked by the population, but these events, due to their entertainment value, help the government dodge accountability. In fact, several newspapers, including today's host, the New Indian Express, have stopped IPL coverage as a gesture to keep the nation's attention focused on life and death issues. Ladies and gentlemen, the IPL reminds me of something. The bland that played when the Titanic sank, helping nowhere. Stadium tickets are one of the major sources, if not the most important source of revenue for sports, which is currently void. Even when we talk about streaming, advertisement spending in India has drastically dropped by 21.5%. Now, the concept of virtual concerts have arisen. However, due to poor, poor atmosphere, poor energy, the quality is not up to the mark and bad connection can completely spoil the experience. So even in the virtual form of these events, the inherent essence stays missing. However expensive or interesting the event might be, it is not possible to recreate the caliber of the original on the virtual platform. Hence, loss is the only reality present here. So, is it necessary for us to continue with these events simply for the sake of continuing, even though the money in these events are private assets? For a moment, let us think about the better places where this could be used to actually tide over the pandemic quicker. Finally, ladies and gentlemen, let us think about public perception. Right now, India is in a state of turmoil, in a state of panic. Panic. Innumerable people have lost their lives and industries have shut down. In this scenario, instead of providing entertainment, these expensive events would jive in the harsh realities which the pandemic has inflicted. This is almost like televising master chef during a famine. To conclude, ladies and gentlemen, today we do not have oxygen. We do not have masks. We do not have beds. But you know what's great? Glenn Maxwell hit one of the biggest sixes in IPL history. Thank you very much. I think irony is one of the driving points of that. Thank you so much, Ram. Could I now invite to speak against the motion, Aishita Gundetti? Aishita, if you're good to go. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Aishita Gundetti from Suchitra Academy. And today, I will be talking about why expensive sporting and entertainment events should continue during the pandemic. All the events and competitions that are being hosted are being hosted with all necessary precautions. Wherever you go, you will see that the effort made to make sure everyone is social distancing is just mind blowing. If you have looked at pictures of some concerts which happened during the pandemic with the live audience, you'll see that stages or seats are placed at least six meters apart. That way, the audience can have the time of their lives while being absolutely safe. Also, all the events and competitions that are taking place are entertaining the people who are stuck at home. All this makes this dreadful and unfortunate situation a little bit better. It gives people something to look forward to. This is the one time staring at the TV will be better than going outside. If we had no entertainment, especially in the 21st century, people would definitely go insane at home. So since the event organizers are taking proper precautions to entertain us, it's a win-win. If there's no entertainment, a large sector of the economy will also go for a toss. We already know that the pandemic has resulted in a loss of jobs and caused many businesses to shut shop. On top of that, if we want to cancel all events and programs, imagine the amount of money we will lose. These competitions and programs will somewhat compensate for all the money which was lost during the early months of the lockdown. 
To give you an overview of the impact that cancellation of such events can have, let me take the example of the most awaited event last year. The Tokyo Olympics got postponed to 2021, and by the looks of it, it may get postponed again. This resulted in an economic loss of $23 billion for the Japan economy. If the games are postponed again, another $6.2 billion will go down the drain. And since the live audience will be reduced in half, it will result in a loss of $13.5 billion. The economic decline that we faced in this pandemic is just insane. South of Southwest 2021, World Athletics Indoor Championships 2020, Facebook's biggest event of the year, F8, was also canceled. And the Mobile World Congress 2020, which was supposed to be held in Barcelona, was also canceled. Just imagine hundreds of events like these being canceled. There was no or very little economic development last year. We definitely don't want that for this year too. And remember, everything which is being conducted is being held under all supervision and under all protocols. To sum it all up, I believe that expensive sporting and entertainment events should continue during the pandemic because one, all events which are taking place are following strict guidelines and precautions to ensure everyone's safety. Two, all events that are being held in the pandemic could gradually compensate for the money which was lost in the early months of the lockdown. And lastly, three, if there's no entertainment to keep people entertained at home, then people may go outside to look for a distraction, which in turn will increase cases. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ashita. That was an interesting thing that I never thought about. If you don't have entertainment, people will go out and get infected anyway. Could I now invite Ryan Majumdar, Ryan from JSS, to speak for the motion. Good morning, everybody. My name is Ryan Majumdar from JSS Public School, Bangalore. And today I would be speaking for the topic. So it is said that sometimes a desire is excessive or negative, depending upon the circumstances or society you live in. Having said this, I would like to raise a question. Isn't sports and entertainment a luxury given the crisis faced? Answering this question is very important as it sums up everything about why we should keep such events on hold. In the pyramid of survival, expensive sports and entertainment are at the apex for it is disconnected from ground reality of sustenance and necessities. Hosting such events at the cost of potential health hazards is sheer irresponsibility with COVID-19 cases and hospitalizations on the rise and no amount of protocol will guarantee 100% safety, like sanitizers guarantee. While most might think about sports contributing to the economy, it must be kept in mind that all expensive sporting events and goods contribute to only about 1%, maximum a 2% to the GDP. On the other hand, entertainment events are solely invested by private enterprises and have no significant contribution whatsoever. So this goes without saying that putting sports and entertainment events on hold does not have any life-threatening consequences compared to hosting them during the pandemic. Moreover, expensive sports and entertainment events can surely be compromised if it makes way for investments to reach hospitals instead. Because by hosting these events, the rich people are only becoming rich, richer. So... So, but even if we want to compensate for that 1% loss and if we want to like maintain well-being of the people, there are many other things that you can do. For starters, you can try eSports, which is inside the home, which is inside your house, and you can in, uh, safely pursue it. And it can also contribute to the GDP share by 4 to 5%. As for entertainment, expensive star appearances in far-flung cities and hosting award shows or interviews publicly are no longer practical or safe. Moreover, it is a great time now to pursue extracurriculars. So as the saying goes, desperate times call for desperate measures. While such recreational activities must be put on hold, one must remember that given the humanitarian crisis caused by COVID-19, compromises must be made. So to conclude, I would like to say that in a rush to getting back to normal, Use this time to decide which parts of normal are worth getting back to. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ryan. Where has humanity gone, he asks. To answer that and to speak in opposition, may I invite Aryan Hotha. Aryan, of course, is from DAV Vedanta International School. Aryan, if you're good to go. A very good afternoon, esteemed members of the jury and fellow competitors. I am Aryan Hotha from DAV Vedanta International School. And I am completely against the TikTok. 
Well, the other name of life is celebration and sports events and celebration are like the vitamins of life without which life has no flavor. My friends, life never stops. In the past, this human civilization has faced innumerable calamities, disasters, and so-called pandemics. Has it ever collapsed? So when today the COVID pandemic grips the world, why should we surrender and give up? I do not need to remind you that in order to defy the negativity around you, you need to stay healthy. In order to stay healthy, you need to be happy. In order to be happy, sports and events are undoubtedly necessary, my dear friends. I mean, why should we surrender and live a life of uncertainty? I would again like to tell us that if you want to have a positive attitude, then you must divert your mind from the gloom. If COVID is that gloomy reality, then we must divert our attention from, from it. We should not let, let the excessive thoughts of COVID come into our mind. But here, diverting our mind does not mean being careless and not following the protocols. Well, I believe there is nothing wrong if sports events are conducted with utmost COVID protocols. I mean, if everything is conducted with all sorts of precaution, then what's wrong in it? My question to those who are the opponents who think that IPL and other events are not necessary. What about those youth who lost their job in the pandemic and are left at home with nothing to do and nowhere to go? What about those old people who are too scared to even step out of their homes? Life for them has become miserable and their life has become kind of paralyzed. What about them, my dear friends? Let me give me one more example. Last year also, IPL was held in Dubai with almost protocols. What was bad in it? By stopping everything and staying in a corner of a room does not defeat COVID, my dear friends. We have to face it and learn to live with it. Because COVID is going to stay with us for an eternity. So should everything be stopped for eternity? Even psychologists and doctors advise us to remain active and remain free from anxiety. But in today's scenario, physical exercise is not possible. But if we keep our mind healthy, then indirectly our physical activity is fulfilled. My friends, give me one concrete reason how the IPL will spread the coronavirus if it is conducted without all the audience. Why should we deprive people of their happiness? Why should sports lovers be bored at home? Even the Oscars 2021 were held with utmost precautions. Was it bad? If a sports and entertainment event can relieve stress and anxiety from its people, then what's bad in it? Remember, my dear friends, a positive mind is the best instrument to fight any obstacle in your life. That's all. Thank you. Have a nice day. Thank you, Aryan. And now to talk about why these events should not be held, could I now invite to speak for the motion, Jamin Devakar from GEMS Academy. Jay. Thank you. Expensive sporting entertainment events should be put on hold till the pandemic passes. Let me quickly unpack the topic. We have three issues here. One, expensive sporting entertainment events, say mega leisure events like the Olympics. Two, put on hold is about decision making. And this prompts the question, how long should we wait? We think there's a logical answer to this question. Lastly, until the pandemic passes. Dealing with the cycle of pandemics, how long is this pandemic going to last and when is the next one going to come? We can use several frameworks to make sense of the motion before us. Rationality versus emotionality. Economic development versus sustainable development. Individual good versus social good. In the end, this topic brings me to the fundamental question of how we should live our life. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my common sense that is forcing me to stand for this motion. And we should put events on hold until we cross the tunnel. As Adam Smith said, man is a rational animal that makes the right bargains in life. Our rational behavior can be purely selfish or keeping our promise in a social contract. Taking from Genesis 4 and 9, I am my brother's keeper, is the approach we should take before we decide to get out and play expensive sporting events. I'm not going to bring up the Grim Reapers, Grim Reapers tally table to play the doom and gloom tune. I'm kind of numb by numbers by now. We know that the reality is tough for millions of people, and to think of going out to have fun is neither rational nor ethical. We had elections just the other day in Kerala, and a few weeks later, the rate of infections went up. And I'm still wondering what was the hurry to hold the elections. I know elections are not part of the topic, but to me, it all looks like a circus, a political circus with lots of entertainment.
Rationality tells me that we should put such events on hold as life only exists till we die. This brings me to the next framework, the economic development thinking, the kind of Prada Willy syndrome, an eating disorder seen among some people. Yes, we need to keep the economy alive for survival, but hosting mega events now is not the way to do it. With this deadly virus, playing the now or never game might bring you closer to the coffin. Wait a while, live safe. Why hurry? There's plenty of chicken curry. Life is not a sprint event. It is more like a marathon. You pace yourself or else you might get tired. Lastly, let us look at this individual good versus social good. If we all make decisions that are good for us individually at the expense of others, Hardin's famous tragedy of commons will happen. Those people with mild symptoms or no symptoms went out spreading the virus in mega events and that contributed to the growth of this crisis. Only in a healthy society can happy individuals exist, but it takes healthy individuals to make a happy society. Mm. To conclude, how to live your life has many pathways to choose from. Don't get played into the reckless economic rationalism of government to keep up the GDP race. Don't be the gladiators again. Please agree with me for the motion. Mega events can wait. Thank you. Thank you, Jay. That was extremely well put. Could I now invite to speak against the motion? Sai Sri Varshini Madala. Sai Sri Varshini Madala, of course, is from Meridian School in Hyderabad. Shri, if you're ready, you can get started right away. Enough. I'm traumatized by all the news channels spreading false information. I'm scared to touch loved ones. I'm praying each time I hear the ambulance sirens and frustrated by all the rubbish propaganda and cheap politics. And I feel helpless in a society where the cheapest thing is a human life. Greetings to the respected chairperson, judges, to my worthy opponents, and to the audience. This is Sirivarshini from Meridian Manjara, Hyderabad, here to speak against the motion. I know you all can relate to my sorrow. We aren't heartless machines. We are humans, bound to be emotional, bound to be tired. And I crave a few moments to just release my tension, to stop being haunted by all those pictures in the newspapers. And a few moments of cricket or a few moments of reality shows does help. I, for example, am happy to have a different topic to talk to my friends rather than recall all the heart-wrenching things happening around us. And we're all running behind Ayurveda, uh, homeopathy and uh, supplementaries for vitamins and this and that. But we have been forgotten what was always told to us. Laughing is the best medicine. And the big boss in Hindi, Telugu, Kannada, Tamil, Malayalam has provided entertainment during the lockdown. And I dare say people would have gone crazy without it. We know that marketers wait for the whole year for IPL to boost their sales. And the sporting businesses, I know, have been hit hard with no spectators. And yet, they are trying their best to give some solace to the nation. And even the authorities and players are also working and trying to make the best out of this worst situation. However severe bubble fatigue is, many players are ready to pay for it to make us happy. We need to get inspired by the spirit they show and understand the message of humanity and responsibility that they send our way. And actually, tell me one thing. The commentators, players are regularly reminding us of the COVID norms and precautions, but we want to put those things on hold but no problem with all the political leaders and politicians, all of them are conducting huge rallies during elections. That's not something we want to put on hold. Classic theories. And many COVID patients wait for the evenings to look at the matches and that's something they look forward to in their day. We have all lost so much. Let's not lose these little pleasures that we have in our life too. And for all those who are stuck at home, all these kind of things are a relaxation for us. And to put it in Zoom language, disconnect to reconnect. And these are some terrible times that we need the comfort entertainment provides us. And finally, let's stay strong. This too shall pass. We'll emerge stronger. And I actually just have one more point to mention. Stay home, stay safe. That's actually true. You know, everybody should mask up. When you're in the safety of your homes, perhaps not, but even that, they say you should. Well, the last speaker for the motion, may I now invite Dia D from Oak Ridge. Dia, if you're good to go, floor is yours. Over 200,000 people have died in India in under a year from COVID-19. So it might seem a little crass to talk about sport and COVID, but 
COVID, but sports during COVID-19 are important economically, physically, and mentally. Hi, my name is Dia from Oakridge International, and I will be talking for this motion. Now, agreeing with uh, some of the speakers before me, um, we do need to make the best of the situation. We do need to think about what is going to happen in case COVID doesn't go away soon. And let's be honest, it might not. But does that mean we need to put out so many sports players out there and watch them for entertainment? I mean, let's be honest, we all have Netflix. But spreading positivity, positivity doesn't have to do with putting millions of lives in danger. Unsafe jobs aren't good jobs. If you're telling each other that, you know, um, employment has increased by so much, the second wave of COVID has also increased. A significant part of the economy revolves around our leisure choices, what we do when we're not at work. It matters economically. But is the economy so important right now? I mean, I'm not saying the GDP doesn't matter, the fact that we don't have money doesn't matter. But what does matter and what we've all learned because of COVID-19 is our health. Sporting events and are economic events, but they're also social events. Since March 2020, we all have been reminded of the risks of social events and how they pose in the healthcare crisis. The more people someone interacts with, the closer the longer, and the more frequent the interactions, and the more con contact with the frequent touch surface, the higher risk of COVID-19 spread. Indoor events pose greater risks than outdoor events. While we're making movies, the amount of people that can get affected. We don't know one celebrity that hasn't been affected by COVID-19, but they're still out there asking us to open up the theaters and asking us to watch their movies. For what? Benefits of the economy? Now, life and death issues are definitely more important than uh, watching the IPL or watching a movie. I think we can all agree on this. And I would really like to encourage all of you to think about the amount of disadvantages watching sports can have. Uh, they can also be negative disadvantages in case your team loses. Like um, uh, competitors before have me said, there are a lot of at-home activities we can do, like mentioned, watch Netflix, learn a new language, maybe learn a new dance form. These are things we can actually do and we don't have to put people out there. Um, I personally love watching the IPL. I've watched it since I was much, much younger and it's something that I genuinely enjoy and watch it alone with my granddad. And that's one of the things we bond over. But let me be honest, if that meant putting thousands of people's lives at risk, I would rather not. In conclusion, um, is Bangalore versus Hyderabad more important than Bangalore and Hyderabad are now safe? Thank you so much. Well, that's a fantastic note to leave us on. And, you know, I'm glad you admitted that you like watching the IPL because I suspect everybody likes watching the IPL. But these are very troubled times and I think there are difficult decisions to be made. Could I now invite our last speaker to speak against the motion, Arush Sarma? Shakespeare famously said, a rose by any other name would smell just as sweet. Full marks to the sophisticated organizers who did not want to indulge in naming and shaming. However, the focus is clearly on the Indian Premier League or as someone uncharitably called it, the insensitive profit-making legion. Ladies and gentlemen, I, Ara Sharma, oppose the motion that expensive sporting entertainment events should be put on hold till the pandemic passes. Does corona discriminate on the basis of wealth or race? Then why focus only on expensive events? Are we targeting rich investors in Marxist-driven obsession? If not, then let us take a decision that we will stop all events and spend the day watching yoga and Kisan Bandhu programs. We are advocating putting such events on hold. Today, we are in a tunnel with a faint light shining at the end. Will it end? Yes. Then, no one knows. Putting on hold thus translates to finishing it off. But of course, we live in a world of subtle sophistication where we do not state the obvious. Sir Humphrey Appleby would indeed be pleased. For one moment, think of the lakhs of families being told to stay home, stay safe. And do what? Sure, washing utensils and mopping floors is exciting. But please, they need a break. To sit in front of the, front of the TV set as a family, cheering and ooing. The well dead tell us that Nero fiddled while Rome burned. They remind us that Queen Marie wanted people to eat cake if they did not have bread. Well, they seem to forget that these events are hardly cake. The elite are already well ensconced in their home theatres, catching the latest episodes of Riverdale. Others say that such events convey the impression that there are two Indias, one struggling for a hospital bed and the other holidaying in Maldives. This is no impression. There are two Indias. 
And if we think that by banning such events, we will bridge the gap, we are living in Papu's paradise. Well, he'll have already escaped to the London countryside. So you are going to punish those of us left behind by taking away our few hours of evening entertainment. Someone who has a family member on the deathbed does not care about sports, but others do. And these others constitute more than 99.99% of India's population. Should the whole country stop working and start molding? Remember, sporting events support lakhs of families directly and many more indirectly. Let Kohli take his whopping match fees, but let us make sure that India benefits from it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Arush. I think that's a very interesting point that you made. There are two Indias. Think about the rest of us. Well, with that, we've come to the round of at the end of our first round. I'd like to congratulate all of you guys. I thought there were some phenomenal points. Without further ado, what we're going to do is we're going to jump straight into our rebuttals. Remember, you can opt not to make a rebuttal. You've got two minutes. Please do so politely. Please do so without argumentation. And be very nice to your opponents because that's the whole spirit of civil debating. We're going to go in the same order that we came in. And on that note, let me invite Pratyusha. Do you have a rebuttal for us? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, with all due respects to my worthy opponents, I would like to put forth the following points. So many of you mentioned that bio bubbles and uh, playing things are safe, right? Yes, we can ensure safety to players. But what about, can we stop the crowding of people at, uh, we can stop the crowding of people in stadiums and cinema halls. But can we stop the crowding of people in coffee shops and other open spaces where people get together in such huge numbers, which, uh, which in, indirectly spreads the pandemic and the disease? And also, I would uh, the next thing many people spoke about is the loss of money. L like things are being postponed, and there's billions and millions of people, uh, the uh, entertainment people, losing money, right? So when people, when human resources aren't there itself, now it is a situation where the human resources are dying, and when the human resources aren't surviving, how can we combat such a huge loss without human resource? So I think the life of people is more important. And also people are struggling for beds and other things and people at ventilators are dying. And I, I don't think no one will enjoy entertainment or sporting at this hour. And for those who really need sporting and entertainment, it's not the only means of entertainment, right? I live in a house without TV. And do you think I'm still happy? I'm still happy. I'm living my life very happily. And the thing I do is we can call video, we ha can have video call with friends. We can do yoga at home and we can do much more other activities which give us also a means of entertainment. And, uh, and many other thing is, instead of wasting our time at home, watching some movie or any uh, IPL cricket, cricket match or something, we can go out and we can help the people. Anyhow, all of us are going to die one day and we have two options. Either we die for nothing or we die for something. I would choose to die for something. At this hour, people need people and they need the medical staff and many people need people to employ and there are many employment opportunities. We can go work there and help many people combat the disease. So, thank you. Thank you so much, Pratyusha. That was very emphatically put. Uh, Neha, do you have a rebuttal for us? Um. First of all, it is precisely the reason that we cannot go out, that we should stay at home, that we have to stay at home. And we must. It is right that we stay at home and make sure that the COVID-19 doesn't spread. Um, and second of all, the economy is very important. If we do not ensure that the distressed economy recovers, then how are we going to feed people in the future or like in a month? And apart from that, a huge portion of the population is at home and they're bored. And we're not taking into account the loads of people who were daily wage workers and they've lost their jobs and now they're starving at home and the only hope for them to survive is that the economy gets better. And what I also wanted to say was taking a break does not mean ignoring the pandemic. It doesn't mean careless mingling. It just means seeking some respite after a long day and sitting home and watching an interesting sporting event like the IPL. It, the IPL means a lot to many people. And if 
the IPL doesn't have any painful repercussions like increasing cases, which it does not because it is being conducted in a very safe manner, then it's a win-win situation. There aren't any increase in cases or painful repercussions and people are having fun at home and they're not going out. All right. Thank you very much, Neha. Ram, do you have a rebuttal for us? Bio bubble, bio bubble, bio bubble. Opposition speakers, really sorry to burst your bubble. Ladies and gentlemen, the bio bubble is not some unreachable, all powerful entity which cannot be breached. In the IPL, players have already been infected, Nitish Rana, Akshar Patel. And if the bio bubble is so powerful, please answer why so many cricketers have withdrawn from the IPL for fear of COVID. Now, every speaker talked about economic decline, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sure this will probably not turn around with more COVID cases. Every speaker talked about positivity, relaxation and happiness from sports and entertainment. Well, it's great that they are facilitating happiness at the cost of human lives, of course. So we are ready to endanger lives for our needs. Aryan talked about how COVID-19 has spread and we are surrendering. Let me make this clear. Living cautiously is not the same as surrendering. He talked about how COVID-19 is here to stay, but it will slowly evolve into an endemic with specific places with concentration. We are talking about until the pandemic passes, that is until the world has COVID-19. Now, Sai Siri gave a very chilling description about COVID. Fun fact, this would just increase with the help of sporting and entertainment events. And I just talked about how 90 99.9% of people can uh, uh, watch sports without COVID. Ladies and gentlemen, I would just like to point out to you the amount of distraction and misinformation. Let me remind you, yesterday there were 3.6 lakh cases. We do not decide the timeline, ladies and gentlemen. COVID-19 does. This is not like every year. Money does not mean everything. Lives do. This is a medical emergency. And finally, the probability still to our side with so many people in this ecosystem, the odds of COVID spreading are completely on our side. And uh, finally, Arun talked about distracting us. Ladies and gentlemen, the opposition accepts that sporting and entertainment is simply a distraction from the crisis at hand. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ram. Can I now ask Aishita? Aishita, do you have a rebuttal for us? Okay, so Pratyusha, you said let's convert stadiums into hospitals. How do you suggest we do that? Put hospital beds in an open space? I don't think that's a good idea. And Ram, the answer to your question, bio bubbles is just a precaution. Most cricketers are like being tested and social distancing. Because, and uh, Pratyusha, you also said like there's crowding in coffee shops and stuff like that. That can be prevented if uh, people don't have to leave their homes and if they're entertained enough to stay at home, they're not bored enough to go outside. And you, Pratyusha, you said that you want everyone to go out and help people. Wouldn't that just put more of us in risk? Ryan, you said something about GDP and how the, uh, in the pandemic, the, G, the GDP dropped by 23.9%. Uh, where will we get the money to fund our medical expenses? Esports will not compensate for that. Like you said, it will only come up with 4% of the total GDP. Jamin, I'm so sorry if I'm pronouncing your name wrong, but you said something about selfishness and we as the audience are not forcing anyone to do anything. We're simply taking pleasure in what is being provided to us. And all events, I repeat, are being held under all proper precautions. There's nothing to oppose here. That's about it. Thank you. Thank you. Ryan, you have a rebuttal for us. Yeah, yes, I do. So uh, the first point I would like to say is that many, most of my opponents are telling that uh, the IPL leagues, the players are going out and we should be encouraging them. Well, to be honest, many Indian players are very edgy about the situation. Even they don't want, don't want to play or complete the IPL leagues. Many Aussie players, from, players from UK, South Africa, all of them are stranded inside their hotels for nine months so they so even for so more than us they are suffering so it doesn't make sense and aisha also spoke about the tokyo olympics so and now there has been a thing that tokyo olympics are now investing a bit too much that's into organizing the entire event last time the tokyo olympics uh, the the assumption was that the Tokyo the Olympics would take only about $10 billion.
but the actual expenditure raised by 41 billion dollars that is a total of 51 billion dollars so in this pandemic who how much investment if the countries are going to invest that much then how will we get all the supplies and everything and moreover those investments are coming from countries like Kazakhstan and most importantly China and then the other thing about the as a Varshini, I'm sorry, yeah, is it Varshini? Yeah. She told about the election commission that is being organized. Well, in Chennai, according to the article, it was clearly stated that the Chennai High Court almost pressed murder charges on the state election commission because they are, were not following the COVID protocols. So in that, so, you know, all of us are looking, are looking into the situation. It's not like we are holding the thing for no reason. So that's what I would like to say. Thank you, Ryan. Aryan, your rebuttal, please. Yes, sir. Well, all of my opponents kind of have a misconception that we are kind of insensitive entities who do not care about people. Starting over with Pratyusha. Well, you contradicted your own statement. In your opening statement, you said that we must stay safe and stay inside our home. And in the ending of your rebuttal, you said that we must go outside and help people. Well, uh, that doesn't make any sense to me. And for your kind information, if IPL is hypocrisy, let me tell you, one out of five COVID patients die out of anxiety, die out of fear and not of the disease because they fear that something will happen to them. And you talked about eight teams and 18 players in each uh, uh, team, right? These eight players and 18 teams have to go under thousands of tests before even reporting into the ground. So how is it in bad? Every now and then, commentators are asking us to wear masks. So how is IPL insensitive Premier League? Coming on to my friend Ram. Well, you sort of have many misconceptions. You said that let us wait till the COVID passes. My dear friends, I ask you, do you know the exact, exact year, exact day when the COVID will pass? Even I don't know. The COVID is going to stay for a very long period of time. So should everything be stopped? And you told that money in these events are private assets. My dear, starting from the sanitary workers to the health workers to the caterers to the players, everyone uh, earns something from this event. So is it private asset? Well, friends, why should we wait for the pandemic to pass? And you said that distraction is not good. I say distraction is good because in India, there are 56 million people suffering from depression in 2021, 38 million people suffering from anxiety in 2021. So isn't this kind of distraction good? Ryan, you told about in Chennai, um, something about election commission. What about Bengal? <laughs> in Bengal, I mean, people are assembling like nothing. Isn't there a risk of spreading the COVID? At last, Dia, uh, I would like to say you that the place I come from is Karahandi Dish, which is a very interior place. Here, people uh, really can't afford the Netflix and the only source of entertainment for them is IPL. So to all my comp components, let's not deprive people of their health. Thank you so much, Aryan. Jamin, do you have a rebuttal for us? I'd just like to apologize for how I pronounce your names. So um, I agree with Sai Siri Vashni on her plea for entertainment to distract us from the grim reality. Yes, humans are emotional animals, but Siri, let me remind you that our hedonistic Greek conspicuous consumption mindset must get checked at times. Arush, instead of demanding more IPL, why not watch all matches again and again? Or make your own entertainment. This is what we did, my brother and I. We started a YouTube channel and we just made videos to amuse ourselves during the lockdown. The rational man is a pure economical man. The rational, rationalizing man is the social economic man. As Weber suggested, we need to measure and calculate the risk versus rewards. If risk is the reward, then going out and celebrating life is like riding the high speed, high speed lane to hell. I'm waiting for the rational man to grow into an ethical being. Aishiti spoke in length about the econo economic risk of the Japanese economy in case the Olympics gets post postponed again. I think the Japanese Mindo mindset, the macho mindset will prevail and they will go ahead with the Olympics. Aryan spoke about sports bringing happiness and health. I'm sorry, Aryan. I don't think Pradushia's mom is the only doctor who will find your logic out of place. Do you know how many doctors have died in this crisis? Why does everything boil down to the economy? Dollars and cents. Seems like we're 
not sensitive enough to the suffering of people and even animals. Thank you. Thank you, Jay. Ashley, would you like to make a rebuttal now? Definitely. Go ahead. All right. So first and foremost, my name is Ashley. Yeah. And then uh, there are uh, many things addressed to me. I wanted to address each one personally, but let me go in all. We're, uh, we're thinking about the rich making money. We're thinking about the poor not having sustainable life. But in between the rich and poor, we are forgetting the main people, the middle uh, the people between them and the, uh, those are the people who are actually suffering more you know and this entertainment is something i'm not telling that you know you will get rid of the virus if you just watch ipl matches i'm telling that it is some source for them some thing to look forward to in life some kind of a optimism for them and um, i don't know i recently watched a video of a uh, ambulance driver uh, uh, dancing uh, near a barat and uh, you know, so many times we have come across videos of doctors dancing and, you know, uh, um, encouraging people through the COVID patients to what they are doing. So they are trying to, you know, entertain those people. And now we here are saying, oh, my God, those doctors are working so hard. We need to stop all this entertainment. Those people are actually trying to entertain the COVID patients only. And the more we get anxious and the more, you know, we concentrate so much on COVID, 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 those patients, that kind of, uh, they are going to get hysterical, you know. You only need oxygen cylinders when the levels go down below 85. But now there is a, uh, um, you know, a shortage for oxygen everywhere. It's not, but remember that this um, wave is not as serious, uh, is not as serious as the first thing that was good. So basically, it's the people's, anxiety their depression that has led to this more than I, I i i know that the virus is spreading fast but in a way to curb it we need to keep people to home and also um i'm uh, like the uh, uh pratyusha you mentioned about uh, going out and uh, i know people have uh, uh, spoken about it but uh, i don't think we are in a situation mm. where we can go out and do something so thank you thank you thank you Vashni. Dia, your rebuttal, please. Yeah, um, well, I would just like to clarify saying when I read Netflix, it was an example for different activities. Like mentioned, like, uh, like mentioned earlier, there are so many activities are in place that we could do instead of watching the IPL. I mean, don't tell me sitting in front of your TV for four hours is better than learning a new skill. Now, furthermore, I would like to talk about um, the fact that we have no motivation whatsoever to do these activities, to go outside and help people. We can't do this. It's not a place. It's not our place. And furthermore, it's not something that it can happen due to the COVID pandemic. But that doesn't mean we can't play our part. We can't, you know, make easy donations. We can't talk to people and help them out of anxiety and depression. I recently did an internship where I got to speak to people under the poverty line and their views about COVID-19 and help them through the anxiety they're fearing. This issue is very real, like Aryan mentioned, but that does not mean we watch IPL and cure it. Moreover, we all are going through the same issue. The only difference is how we take action towards it. Uh, nothing is guaranteed, like Ryan mentioned in his first speech, but let's talk about the fact that um, during the COVID-19 pandemic, the, first, uh, the last year during the COVID-19 pandemic, we had hope. We had the fact that maybe by next year, this time, things would change. But flash news, guys, nothing has changed. The second wave is only getting worse. And by watching entertainment, it's not hypocrisy. I mean, let's be honest, we all want to watch entertainment. We all want to distract ourselves. The only difference is... We don't want to put thousands of people, we don't want thousands of people to put their lives online for our personal joy and our personal entertainment. Now, uh, I also would like to mention a point that uh, Vashnevi brought up, apologies if I didn't get the name right, but uh, dancing and watching a sport where you need to take thousands of tests are very different things. I mean, I can dance front of you right now. But I can't take thousands of tests and go play a match with someone who could possibly have COVID. Because even the tests are only 99% secure. There is a chance that you still get COVID even keeping all of these precautions in mind. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dia. Our last speaker for today, Arush, your rebuttal, please. My worthy adversary said that it is hypocrisy for us to see IPL while people are mourning and suffering. I'm sorry, but did anyone ever force anyone else to see the IPL? Imagination should also have limits. An event is being conducted and our countrymen have an option to see it while self-isolating, while keeping indoors. This will assist in our fight against COVID. This is yet another tool in our arsenal to entertain ourselves during isolation. We may not use it, 
but one certainly cannot deny others from using it. The support talked about how my statistics were misleading. 190,000 people have died due to COVID. This is about 0.003% of the total population of India. This means that 99.99% of the people still have the ability to watch sporting events. My worthy opponent also talked about how, the, how we are about the usage of scarce resources. I agree that we must utilize our scarce resources for the fight against COVID. However, we must not deplete the sources of these resources by stopping sporting events such as IPL. Our country needs every rupee in this fight. If we do not have any to spare, if you have any to spare, donate. However, we must not cut into what we already have. The support talked about how uh, my worthy adversary talked about how the elections were conducted. I agree that this conduction was wrong. However, we are not debating elections. We must not bring truth in. We must not bring in a truth to promote a lie. Sporting events such as the IPL are economic events, which will provide some invaluable revenue to fight COVID. This will provide much-needed livelihood to lakhs of people. You can stay indoors and enjoy the event. Sports events are held without any spectators. Thank you. Thank you very much, you guys. I think that's as good a note as any to wrap things up on. Let me congratulate all of you. I thought that was phenomenal. I thought we had some really good arguments. On one side, we had humanity. On the other side, we had anxiety on the economy. And I think it's, it's a debate that's wide open right now. And I'm glad we had this. Congratulations, all of you. Ashita, I'll give you 30 seconds. Uh, reply to what Ryan said. Yeah, I talked about the Tokyo Olympics and the amount invested here doesn't matter. We've managed before and we still can. And also the money made here will like make a huge profit. And that profit can be used for other medical expenses that we need in this pandemic. That's it. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Ashita. Okay, Ryan, but this is the absolute last word. We don't have time. So I'll give you 20 seconds. So According to you, the Tokyo Olympics is investing billions of dollars and that too, those dollars have to come from somewhere, right? They're coming from countries itself. The countries are suffering and then they, and upon that they have to, in, they're, they're going to invest in the Tokyo Olympics. So if those, so the profits are not going to suffice enough as much as the investments will. So that's all I would like to say. Thank you very much. All right, guys. Now, I really must give the floor to Mr. Neela Kandan because, uh, Mr. Neela Kandan, let me remind you, we're not announcing the results till we say goodbye to our friends. So maybe just a few comments from you about how they did. Uh, it was very fascinating to hear all of you. Uh, absolutely wonderful. And I will congratulate the team who were supporting the IPL because it's very difficult to convince. We all including Indian Express had taken a new Indian Express had taken a decision not to uh, have the news of IPL, right? Most of us have so to argue something against that. It's one of the toughest thing. Uh, both sides have put fascinating points. I had noted a lot, uh, but since we are not uh, uh, announcing the results. Uh... Mr. Chavla, could I invite you to say a few words about their performance, please? You see, I was very impressed with the quality of participants. All of them were very passionate about the subject they were speaking. They have done the research. They were very passionate about for and against. Both of them were really good. And some of them, of course, faltered by them. Some of them were not fully prepared, but yet. But their commitment to the topic was much more visible. And I think uh, they were very clear what they want. That's a good, good indication of future generation. They're very clear about what kind of things they want and what kind of things they want to reject. So I would say it was a good attempt on the part of New Indian Express to start a topic which is much more dear to the millions of young people. Even the girls who are speaking here, normally you feel that girls are not interested in sports in even like cricket, but they're very fully informed and they were very much talking about it. And uh, Neil Kanton was saying, talking about it looks like that he's in favor of host hosting IPL, but personally speaking, not that I'm part of the Indian Express team, but personally also I feel that it is a waste of time and money bio bubble being created at expensive thing for them. Why not bio bubble for everybody else? How much does it cost to create a bio bubble for them from the hotel to the ground and how they keep the bio bubble going for about few billion dollars which these players are making? Australian can set an example for by donating $1,000, but I have not had a single Indian player donating a single rupee to the cause. And they are all getting the rich money. They are, 
is still finding space on the television, is sponsoring, uh, sponsoring almost two dozen products at a time. A wonderful job, congratulations to all of you. You are the future of good India. No, I won't say the Atmanirbhar Bharat, but Golden Bharat. Okay, everybody, we have finally come to the end. The moment of truth is here. Drum roll, please. We now have the judges announcing the final winners of the senior category of the New Indian Express's Let's Debate. I am now going to ask Mr. Anand Neelagandan to announce the winner of the finest point. Winner of the finest point is uh, Arush Sharma. Congratulations, Arush. You get yourself a 1,000 rupee gift voucher from Link Pens. Could I now ask Mr. Chavla to announce the winner of the best rebuttal, Counter-Strike? Best rebuttal, I think I would go with number... Number 6, Aryan Hota. Yeah. Okay, so contestant number 6 as per Mr. Chavla is Aryan Hota. Congratulations, Aryan. You have our best rebuttal. All the best. You also get a gift voucher for Rs. 3000 from Link Pens. Mr. Neelakandan, could I ask you to announce the lighter side? Pratyusha Uddhapa, number one. Congratulations, Pratyusha. Your point about the IPL and the new expansion, I think, did the trick. You also win yourself a gift voucher. And now, could I ask Mr. Chawla to announce our runner-up for the senior leg of Let's Debate? Runner-up for, the, for the, that is, I think, runner-up for that is number seven. All right. Well, contestant number seven is J. Min Divakar. Congratulations, Day. You are our runner-up of Let's Debate. Congratulations, Jay, for getting this. And finally, Mr. Neelakandan, could I ask you to announce our grand title winner? Uh, the winner is Arush Sharma, number 10. Congratulations, Arush. Arush is from Sai International School. Congratulations. You are the very first winner of the New Indian Express's Let's Debate. You get a fantastic gift voucher for 5,000 rupees from Link Pens. You get a rolling trophy and you get fantastic bragging rights. Thank you very much, Mr. Neela Kandan. Thank you very much, Mr. Chavla, for doing this. This is a very important topic and this is something that the nation is divided on. But I'm glad these young people were able to give us interesting thoughts and great research. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope everybody enjoyed watching this. Thank you so much for being a part of Let's Debate. Remember, never stop debating. That's the one thing we can hold on to during these troubled times. Stay safe, mask up and get vaccinated. Thank you and have a great evening. Every kid has a great story to tell. Have one? Well, we're listening. Send your best story to the New Indian Express's Bookworm Junior Summer Stories Contest and you could just end up becoming an author over the summer. What are you waiting for? Get writing.